Welcome everybody to the AIverse, where I bring you the monthly roundup of everything in artificial intelligence and the metaverse. So this is for the month of December, and this is the end of the year. So very exciting time to look back and see everything that's happened for the month and potentially might even be an episode where we look back on how everything is developed over the year. Yes. Thank you very much. So today we'll actually be diving into the key highlights from December 2023. Topics of interest that I've put together and carefully curated for you in this world of AI and metaverse. So first of all, we're going to start with AI and the top stories. Happy so, birthday to ChatGPT. So it's actually one year. It's a one year birthday of ChatGPT. It's had an explosive year. It was the fastest growing application in history on the planet. It took the world by storm. This particular article was about the revenue that they've started to generate. Basically had over 110 million installs and nearly $30 million in revenue. So they've really struggled with revenue. They've been running at a loss for quite some time, but you can see the chart is starting to scale up. People are really starting to pay for these services on phones. And it's really interesting as well. It's still new to... Androids, but you can see on Apple, Apple really dominates the market here, which is really quite interesting, I thought, from the perspective of what Apple stands for as a company. It's this really awesome, innovative company that really had a visionary leader, visionary founders, and they're kind of attracting those types of people into their company who want state-of-the-art technology, who are really in tune with these sorts of things. And it's really a testament. This graph is really a testament to that. It's one of those really fascinating things that you can start to see in data. And so last month, Elon and X released Grok. So this was huge news. It's Elon, obviously, as you may or may not know, walked away from ChatGPT. He walked away from OpenAI. He didn't like the direction that they were going in. And there is speculation that he bought Twitter to basically have a pool of information that he could train his own artificial intelligence uh, software in. So this AI, Grok, actually has a personality and it's based on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So it has a bit of a rebellious streak and it answers, you know, really kind of spicy questions, unlike ChatGPT, which is highly, cur it's become really highly curated and overly controlled. So it's really interesting to see that there's all these different kinds of personalities about AIs. So you have Google Gemini as well. Reports are saying that it outperforms GPT-4 in 30 out of 32 benchmarks. But as you may or may not know, GPT-5, they are actually in the process of training that. And then, of course, this is a very, very interesting story. So I'm going to show the clip of this in just a moment. So OpenAI confirms ChatGPT is getting lazier and they're, they're working on a fix. So I'm going to show a video of this in just a second. But one thing that I want to comment on about this is I find this really interesting. I'm really fascinated, for example, with Jungian psychology and the different archetypes of people. So it's kind of interesting to see that Grok has this kind of certain type of archetype and personality. ChatGPT has another type of personality. What's the type of personality that Gemini has? And so it's going to be really interesting to see ah, how are these different kind of artificial intelligence personalities going to interact with the world? It really makes me think, hmm, hang on a minute. The AGI is going to be probably something that sees all of those different artificial intelligence, large language model, and it's probably going to be trained on all of those. And that's when AGI is going to come because at the moment, those things are like getting trained by as much data as possible. But imagine if there's, this is where quantum computers is going to come into it. Our energy output is going to need to scale up. Our computing processing power is going to need to scale up. And there'll be something that's actually in real time, constantly updating the data from all these different kinds of artificial intelligences. And then from there, what kind of personality would that have? Would we even need to train it? Like the idea of AGI's little clip. So this is from Rao Powell. And David Matten, both really experts in the artificial intelligence world. So I'm just going to play this little clip about the laziness of ChatGPT. We saw some interesting stories. One was that ChatGPT4 had dumbed itself down over Christmas. And they found there's a <laughs> seasonality it. that it had learned from humans that it becomes less productive at certain periods of time and more productive but over others, which is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, we. It, Yes, I mean, that that at least is the leading theory that, you know, deeply embedded in the training data is the idea that you just don't work quite as hard over Christmas and you take. Really interesting, right? So it's kind of learnt that they, they learn in ways that we don't quite understand. They hallucinate, so they kind of dream, they make up answers. And they've it's basically adopted this idea of like Christmas is break time. So today is the 20th. 30th of December. So 
is it going to be a day off for chat gpt tomorrow when on new year's day who knows okay. developments so this was an interesting story singapore is set to significantly significantly expand its ai expertise so they ranked fourth in the world in terms of their revenue for tech in 2023 so there was usa first china and taiwan and i, I actually wondered about taiwan i thought why is taiwan up there and then ah googled it Ah, this is China making a big power play because USA has basically banned China from NVIDIA, doesn't send their chips to China, NVIDIA. So where are they going to get it from? So they get their superconductors from Taiwan. So Taiwan is kind of like their factory. But I really like this idea of Singapore training up 15,000 AI experts. I think every country should be moving in this direction. I would love for Australia to be moving in this direction and being at the forefront of that. But we do often lag behind, unfortunately. So this is AstraZeneca. So AstraZeneca ha is teaming up with AB uh, with Absky to help develop and design an antibody that fights cancer. But this is the kind of beauty that AI can bring to the world. If you can start to train it on the data of cancer patients and how they get cancer and there's and solutions and how they're actually getting healed and start to interconnect all this data, medical industry is just going to start to explode. This is the singularity that that we're talking about where everything just becomes exponential. Now, the next one, politics. So there was actually some big advancements last month. Europe has actually been at the forefront of a lot of this. So Europe has agreed on a landmark AI regulation deal. So basically what it is, is that Europe in general has been very active with AI regulation and cutting edge, cutting edge regulation, actually. They're also at the forefront uh, of regulation in cryptocurrency as well. So the regulations are actually a big positive step towards creating rules that will actually allow more widespread adoption. So... Some people don't like regulation. It can be a problem. Some people do. I guess it depends on who's doing the regulating and the intelligence of the design of the regulations that really matters. And I think in the future as well, artificial intelligence is going to be an aid in helping us create and optimize uh, better regulations. So this is in terms of scaling up a business. And again, I've been very positive about this idea of artificial intelligence and robots taking over the workforce. I do see it as a bad thing in terms of there's going to be some teething issues and people are going to lose their way and they're going to feel hopeless and useless and perhaps even, you know, there's going to be mental health issues. I don't, I, I don't look forward to those sorts of things, but I do look forward to the idea of once the dust has settled, that there's going to be robots and artificial intelligence that are doing all the things that we don't want to do. So as a society, you know, we talk about a, a four hour work week, for example, there's that Tim Ferriss book. Maybe that actually becomes a reality in the future. And the, um, there's no way something like this is not going to explode. There is just no way. So this is Ava, your new AI employee. Ava is an SDR with 10 times the skills of a human appointment setter, but for 4% of the cost. So somewhat of a secretary in a way, a personal assistant. So if as its database starts to expand out, it becomes more naturalized it, at 4% of the cost. I mean, there's no way something like this is not going to explode. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs, unfortunately, but this is the way that the world is going to go. So I think it's always going to adapt for the better. So there was a robotics Q&A with uh, Meta's Drav Batra. Basically, what he was saying is, what, what what's the role of generative AI in relation to robotics? And so he says, I see generative AI playing two distinct roles in embodied AI and robotics research. So the first is going to be data and experience generators. So he's saying that generating 2D images, videos, 3D scenes, or 4D, which is basically 3D plus time, simulated experiences, particularly in relation to action language conditioned experiences, uh, for training robots because real world experience is really scarce in robotics. So basically think of these as learned simulators. And I believe robotics research simply cannot scale without training and testing in simulation. The next thing he says is architecture for self-supervised learning. So generating sensory observations that an agent will observe in the future to be compared against actual observations and used as an annotation free signal for learning. Furthering robotics with AI is going to be a huge part of future development. You know, we, we just saw the, the, the assistant there. So eventually robots are going to do a lot of the menial tasks. So they're actually going to need to really function well in the world. So it really opens up a world of possibilities for people to experience when they're actually liberated from having to do the kinds of jobs that they don't want to. That's really, for me, the silver lining. In other words, basically 
training robots with real world experience and through these real real world experiences they can they can they can learn they can reflect they can self learn and develop in this way so it actually really closely mimics how a human develops and learns um so this is the exact the exact step that it needs to take so this is tesla tesla unveils its latest humanoid robot optimus gen 2 So here's, here it is developing. So you had Bumblebee, Optimus Gen 1. Look at that. I'm watching this for the first time. That's incredible. is onto it boy is he onto it and this this whole skin is like you know how it showed the thumbs and the little senses the, the closer to a human it mimics obviously the better it is going to be at performing the tasks that we perform and this the skin itself is like the biggest organ the largest organ in this body some people don't actually realize that the skin is an organ and it, the whole thing is sensory so once it actually starts to develop that sensory output as well things are going to be amazing not financial advice this is for entertainment purposes only so everybody's already positioned in meta nvidia so the smart money is already in the the retail money always comes after so um i think in terms of like the stock market it's probably a bit hard to pick something i think i still really think something in cryptocurrency if anything big or any kind of major innovation happens in artificial intelligence, it could be a big narrative. I have been thinking a lot about real world assets and AI, if there's some kind of intersection of this. And the reason why I think real real world assets, it's been a narrative for a, for a few cycles actually with cryptocurrency, but now with the ETF coming, now with smart money coming, now with TradFi coming, they're going to really want to have some developments in this. Uh, BlackRock has mentioned this sorts of thing. So I, Larry Fink, so I think real world assets this could be the cycle where they really start to take off. And if there is some kind of intersection between real world assets and AI and blockchain, that's something that I'll definitely want to keep my eye on the ball on. But honestly speaking, not a lot in this area. So, righty. Thank you very much. Hopefully a nice short and sweet episode today. So that was the roundup for December, 2023. So stay tuned and I will be releasing January, 2024. So the next one is going to be of the next month. And if there's any other big developments in between now and then, I will obviously update you on this and thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed and take care. We'll see you later.